And welcome to a Missouri Valley Conference Cats Chats. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by Southern Illinois head coach Barry Hinson. And Barry, I'm having a hard time figuring out your team this season because you've had some great wins, then you had, you've had a couple of losing skids, and yet here we are, and you're only two games out of first place in the Valley, uh, so you're still within striking distance with about a month left to go. How do you, how do you figure this all out? Well, first of all, welcome to the Valley. It's great to have you back at our conference. And uh, shoot, it's just good to see your face being a part of the Valley. So thanks for doing this series. And I've certainly enjoyed it. And I know the coaches and players, too, have enjoyed it as well. But thanks, Andy, for being a part of this. It's uh, Your name carries a lot of weight. We appreciate it. We appreciate what you do and mean for the Valley. To answer your question, I don't have an answer to that question. If you can figure them out, we'll both write books and both of us retire. But uh, the bottom line is... You know, I said at the far, at the start of the season that this was going to be a miserable year for coaches and a great year for fans. And I I knew going in that the parity in this league was much like it was in 2006. And it's going to be a difficult race. I don't think anybody is going to take off with this race. I really don't. And just like you said, we're sitting here at 12 and 11, 5 and 5 in conference, but we're two games out of first place. And we've got the two teams or the three teams that are leading the league right now all have to come back into beautiful Carbondale. So it's uh, it's going to be a tough race for everybody. I think the, the greatest advice that everybody could give to their fans and to their teams are just don't panic. Everybody slow down here. Let's just let's just take it one game at a time. And the teams that panic are going to be the ones that uh, – that are going to look up at the end and they're going to say, I wish we wouldn't have done this. So, And we could have very easily been one of those teams. I mean, Andy, before the last two games, we lost four out of our five and uh, weren't playing well at all. And uh, you saw us play in Las Vegas, and we were awful. And then the next day you saw us and you thought, okay, we can win the Valley. So it's kind of the tale of two cities here. Uh, it's the best of times. It's the worst of times. We'll just quote some uh, some great writers here, but uh, – I like our basketball team. I, I like this group of young men. We've got 14 young men that are just outstanding of character. And when you get a chance to be around them on a daily basis, you know what? You just you wake up every day with a little bit of hope. So as you search for this consistency, what has been the most consistent part of this team? Well, I think the most consistent thing is, has been for us, has been we've had a really good communication back and forth between our staff and our team. I've always said this. I'm going to quote Rick Wesley, used to be one of my assistants, and he was with Johnny Orr for years, 14 years at Iowa State. And Rick Wesley always used to tell me, healthy families talk. And the one thing that we've tried to do with this basketball team is talk, communicate on a daily basis. Not text, Andy. I didn't say text. I said talk. I know that I know we don't understand that anymore in this day and age, but we've had an enormous amount of team meetings. We've had an opportunity to have individual meetings and we've allowed these guys open forums to share. And it hasn't been fun at times. It's like the old lawyer question. Don't ever ask a question that you don't already know the answer to. And when you do that as a coach, a head coach or as a staff and you get an open forum, be careful. Sometimes that's that that can be difficult, but, We've allowed these guys to share with their, us, with us our thoughts and their thoughts, and it's really worked out pretty good. Matter of fact, I'll have to give this latest turnaround a lot of credit to our guys because they had asked for specific things, and I won't go into those details, but they just said, Coach, we would like to do this. We think this. We think that. And it was, um, it was a great heart-to-heart. -heart. I think it's really helped us. Oh, you got to give me one. Can you give me one? Well, I think the one thing is that they talked about – they don't want to be robots. And as a head coach, and I used to use this term as a, as, a, as a positive, and I still think it's a positive, but it's not in our society. But I'm an old school guy. I'm an old school guy. And, uh, you know, I just feel like sometimes I'm a little too controlling. And they just said, Coach, let us, let us open up here a little bit. Now, the surprising thought of that is we're really not doing anything different I think we're just uh, psychologically, we think we're a little bit more opened up, but uh, I know the guys are having a lot more fun. Well, yeah, with that comes responsibility. I mean, if they're going to have more freedom, then they obviously have to take ownership of that freedom. Uh, how have they been able, even if it's just within a possession, 
uh, how they've been able to do that and to you to you know sort of build that trust to allow them that freedom. Well, I got a group of guys in here listening to this deal now. If I could just, I'm going to record the responsibility part and play it back to our guys because that's exactly what we talked about. And uh, I'll give you a great, this is a great example. So at Bradley, we're down 10 at halftime. Matter of fact, Andy, I think we've been down at halftime every game this year. But we go in at halftime and we talk about virtually what you just said. And we talked about it still doesn't matter the freedom, the non-robotic play, the openness of the game or all this stuff, you still have to take responsibility for what we are and for what we do. And we're not doing what we're, we're supposed to do. And so we got after them a little bit at halftime of Bradley. And the best part of it was they responded. They listened. There are three things that we came out of this meeting with that, they, that the kids really wanted to talk about. And I, I challenged them and I said, okay, I guarantee you as a head coach, I'm going to do these things day in and day out. And most of them were, not going to quit, let's continue, prepare every day, do our best, all this stuff. I said, what can you guys guarantee me? I mean, seriously, what can you guarantee? What can you give back to us that you know, to our fans, to our fan base, to our university, to our program? What are the three things that you are committed to doing? And are not three, they came up with three, and I just said, so they just all kind of started doing it. And it came out to me, listen, I thought that was pretty good, play hard, and play together. And I thought, okay, that's pretty good. And uh, and then they threw in a fourth when they just said no excuses, which I really like that. I really like it because we live in a society today where we something happens. We want to, you know, whine, body language, point fingers, all that stuff. And uh, we just got tired of it. And so we all got together and including me. I mean, you watch me on the sideline. You saw me in Vegas. Uh, I'm probably as reserved and as calm as I've ever been. You know, it used to be I looked like I'd come out of a Pentecostal tent revival. But now I'm just kind of like, OK, I'm just like your back row Southern Baptist up there. Just kind of listen to the music and stand it up every once in a while. All right, Barry, last thing rather quickly here. You guys are beating each other up. What sense do you have that whoever wins this league, once that team gets out of the Valley and into the NCAA tournament, that they may be even more effective away from these teams that are obviously over scouting? you know, have everyone sort of pinned down exactly what their tendencies are that they may feel actually to use our term earlier, a little freer when they go against a team outside of the Valley in a month. Well, I think Andy, you answered that question almost with your statement, but the one thing, the advantage that we have coming out of this league, it's much like the big 12 or the big 10 or the SEC or the ACC, you name any of the power fives, but to win this league night in and night out, you can't take off. Whether you're on the road or whether you're at home, you cannot take time off. So what that does, it makes you prepared for the hardness and the difficulties of the first round, second round, third round, and look at what Loyola did last year going to the Final Four. Barry, appreciate it. Thank you.